the other the other teams before and definitely the work ethic is a lot harder we realize what's at stake we've been so close for so long and uh, hopefully this year like i say we'll get a few breaks and put it all together now our defense we have uh, number 55 marvin jones last year he made third team all american as a freshman and i'm gonna tell you if somebody's got a better linebacker in i hope i don't play against him because he actually has the ability to get to every play on the field whether it's a run or pass he can fly and he's got instinct florida state is known mostly for his wide open offense but um i think we've had a lot of great defensive players also to come through here in the uh, last couple of years and um i'm just trying to establish myself as one of those two well let me say this in closing it's an honor for florida state to be picked number one by the football writers now the last time you did that we blew it the first ball game and uh this year all i can tell you is we're gonna fight our hearts out to try to win that thing this time I'm sure there are a lot of teams out there that will be fighting their hearts out. I'm sure people are wondering where their favorite team is. Where's Collins? Okay, and then we go to quarterback Tommy. Making this play two seasons ago in a game against Vanderbilt. Chucky Mullins passed away earlier this year. Instead of putting his jersey away, his number is given to the defensive player who stands out in spring practice. This year, it will be worn by Jeff Carter, who has quite a tradition to carry on. We take you back to last season, Ole Miss versus Arkansas. The Razorbacks are driving for the winning score with time running out. Ron Dickerson takes the pitch from Quinn Grovey, breaks the tackle, and is about to win the game. But Chris Mitchell darts over and stops him inches short of the goal line. The clock ran out, and the game ended right there. Ole Miss 21, Arkansas 17. Chris Mitchell wore number 38 that day, the first player to earn the honor of wearing Chucky Mullins' number. Chucky watched that big play in a big game, and now the memory of Chucky Mullins will come posthumously, and I'm sure he would enjoy the tradition. A few other items of interest, Colorado has the longest current winning streak in Division I with 10 in a row, but the longest unbeaten streak goes to Georgia Tech at 14. The longest current losing streak, that belongs to Division I AA Austin P at 23 games. And under coaching milestones, Joe Paterno could pass both Bo Schembechler and Woody Hayes on the all-time victories list. Six wins would put him ahead of Schembechler, 10 would move him past Hayes and into a fourth place all-time. That brings us to question nine. We told you earlier. The New York Hilton. Play that big game at Auburn. I'll go ahead and make Michigan. Number four, Notre Dame. Number three, Oklahoma. Now we get to the state of Florida. Number two team in the country, I would make Miami. Number one, Florida State. I see Florida State and Oklahoma playing in the Orange Bowl for the national championship. If that were to occur, I would take Florida State. Boy, would they love that in Norman. Well, we'll have to wait and see. There you have it. Now comes the easy part. We get to watch the 1,100 regular season games between now and and bulls back and stronger so it's, it's just leading leading to it more you know and uh that's that's the way we choose to go coach holtz is, is versatility the key you don't necessarily have to throw the ball 40 times a game to have an effective passing game but you do have to be able to keep the defenses off balance so they they have to guess a little bit i, I think you have to do that but when i i always get pressure we need to throw the ball more i went to notre dame i got out to statistics the top 20 passing teams in the country two of them went to a ball six of the coaches got fired <laughs> top rushing team in the country out of the top 20, 19 went to a ball, one was on probation. <laughs> well, gentlemen, apparently some teams didn't get the word that passing is the offensive weapon of choice, at least among some schools. Ironically, the only school not to have a touchdown pass in 1990 was Air Force. A trip for two to one of these bowl games. Four teams, just three schools in college football history can match that string. The performance of the 1990 squad, one of the youngest in recent FSU history, should give Seminole loyalists every reason to anticipate the continuation of this great legacy. All the people at Florida State would like to thank all the people at Sunbank for making... Weldon's touchdown gives the Seminoles a 14-point margin, but they will encounter anxious moments late in the contest. again the pass rush forces a critical turnover and seals a 24 17 triumph for the seminoles it is their sixth straight bowl victory the ninth consecutive bowl appearance without a loss and it is another tribute to the coaching prowess of bobby bowden 
the winningest bowl coach in NCAA history. With Bowden at the helm, with 17 of 22 starters back for 1991, the message is clear. Watch out for Florida State and watch as the tradition continues. season and put that much in the football I want to be the best there is no scheme that you can win a national championship you have simply got to take them on one at a time and we might as well find out the first ball game whether we are contenders or pretenders we don't have concern with coming in second or third we want it all we want the ring this year WCTV Sports presents Making Magic, the Knowles in 91. Now, from the Magic Kingdom of Disneyland, here is WCTV Sports Director Scott Atwell. Disneyland. If you've seen the commercials following the Super Bowl, you know this is where athletes come when their successful seasons have come to an end. By opening up in the second annual Disneyland Pigskin Classic, Florida State's doing it in reverse, hoping all the while for the same end result. So join us as we travel through this kingdom to see if the Seminoles have the magic to rule the castle. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Wild West indeed. They're already saying this could be the best Florida State defense ever. Certainly, it's the quickest. Start with the corners, where both Terrell Buckley and Errol McCorvey have 4-4 speed in the 40. That spells out bad news for opposing receivers. McCorvey and Buckley will win most shootouts in a man-to-man -man coverage. Yeah, I want to win at Thorpe. I want to be a first-team All-American. I want to lead the nation in interception and punt returns and just play well. Isn't that a lot to ask? No, nah, not for me. <laughs> <laughs> Speed's not exclusive to the backs. Florida State's linebackers can turn up the juice. Howard Dinkins has been clocked at 4-5. Kirk Carruthers, Marvin Jones turn in a 4-6. And we're not finished yet. Imagine, if you will, 4-6 speed coming at you in the form of 275-pound Dan Footman. He's bigger than Lawrence Taylor. He's almost 6'5", and he runs awfully fast. If he performs and if he can stay healthy, boy, he, he is going to add something really, really to us. Footman, a pass-rushing specialist. That is, until the coaching staff feels comfortable that he's recovered from surgery on his knee. If he doesn't catch him, look out for tackle Carl Simpson, who's just an eyelash behind Footman when it comes to foot speed. I think the potential of this defense is outstanding. And our intensity is starting to pick up. And if we can get that, uh, uh, we've got a chance of having a real good defense. Andrews has hit the bonanza. Undoubtedly, this is the most talented bunch of linebackers ever to wear the garnet and gold. Start with sophomore Marvin Jones. The 222-pounder led the team in tackles as the freshman. He says he's never even heard of the term sophomore jinx. You don't be, you know, satisfied with whatever you, you've done, you know. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I feel I, I could have a better year. I mean, I've worked harder than I did last year. Could you have a worse year? Can't be bad all year. <laughs> Jones will team with Kirk Carruthers on the inside, the former Butkus candidate, second on the team in tackles in 1990, and that was an off year. He's come back bigger, stronger, faster, and with a vengeance. I've worked harder than I ever have this summer. I've gained weight. Uh, it's a new Kirk Carruthers. Uh, I'm ready to play football, and I'm hungry, and uh, I want to get back out there and uh, improve myself again. Throw into the equation, Ken Alexander. The Tribe runs a 5-2 defense, but in some formations, you'll see number 36 replace a defensive end just to find a way to get all three of these linebackers on the field at the same time. The outside equally stacked. Reggie Freeman and Howard Dinkins hold down starting roles, but 6-foot-7-inch Sterling Palmer is ready and able. You know, we've got a lot of great players, and it's going to be hard trying to get, you know, 
most of us on the field. But I feel the coaching staff is going to devise a way to do that. Up front, the Ostrzewski twins anchor the line. Nose guard James Chaney is the same type of physical player. Combine that with the finesse and speed of Simpson and Footman, and Ty Dentner could be in for a long evening. It gives us a chance to find out, you know, how good we are in certain areas, and it's going to give some of these people a... Uh, we'll find out real quick if, if uh, how a Dan Footman's going to gonna respond or react in that situation. Leon Fowler and John Davis get the nod at the safeties, both big hitters. But freshman Derek Brooks is playing his way up the depth chart, as is Steve Gilmer. On the corners, it's set. McCorvey and Buckley pair up. We started last year, you know, the defense and all this defensive special team set up a lot, I scored a lot of touchdowns, so I don't see that being any different this year. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. The Lone Ranger rides again. Just in case Florida State doesn't get in the end zone, Scott Player will be called upon to kick it away. However, considering the talent level on this defense, it's likely most of the punting will be done by the opposition. Randy Rudis reporting from Florida State. Well, Brigham Young will really test you. It's going to test your pass defense uh, about as well as anybody can test it. Uh, they, they've got so many unknowns, I just really don't know what to think about them. They, they lost a lot of players. Tulane had some losses last year also, and uh, playing them in Tallahassee, I'd, I'd rather play them here than anywhere else. If you look at your schedule, there are probably five high points on there. And then the others, it's, it's being careful that you don't get upset, because it can sure happen. It happens every Saturday to somebody, and Western Michigan would fall in that category. <laughs> Michigan would be my vote for preseason uh, uh, number one. If I were to have to, when I, when I vote this year for the UPI, I will vote Michigan number one. The uh, main reason, they're, they're, they're two, biggest, two of their biggest games with Florida State and uh, Notre Dame are in Ann Arbor. They had them on the road. I wouldn't. <laughs> don't know that much about Syracuse yet, although they, their program is uh, uh, very healthy right now, and I expect them to bring a good ball club, I, but I think you have an advantage when you play another, a northern team in the south. There's, there's a couple of pitfalls on this schedule worse than any other else I see on there, and that's Virginia Tech and LSU. Virginia Tech nearly beat us last year. And they've got most of their kids coming back, too. And I, and I hear a lot of things about them from pros, uh, about Virginia Tech. They like their quarterback. They like the tackle that they got. And uh, that one could be a little scary. Well, we've asked uh, 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 Middle Tennessee to wear Auburn helmets. You know, try, try to fool our fans a little bit. But uh, that is the, uh, we're just glad that they were willing to substitute for us because we were, we were left with an open date. LSU at Baton Rouge, that's the other team I said, that is, a, you're looking for trouble there now because they got everybody back and a uh, new coach, new enthusiasm at Baton Rouge uh, and they're mad at you. After LSU comes Louisville up there, and uh, Howard has got them uh, where they're not a doormat anymore. Louisville is for real. They had some, they had some good losses, but he's, he's been recruiting well. South Carolina. Uh, it's funny, that's been a school that we've had their number down through the years. There, you know, there have been certain schools, that maybe some schools have, have had our number. We just hadn't been able to beat them. But here's one that's, that we've kind of had their number. I don't know why. I know in 87, you remember when we had we ran up down the field on Miami, and then they won, and we thought, losing all those kids, that we'd get them the next year, and they killed us. So uh, the program down there is strong enough that they reload every year. It, it sticks out. 
sticks in their craw, and when they beat us, that sticks in ours. It's just a natural rivalry. It's as good as any of the state rivalries in the country, probably. And so, yes, it, uh, it gets very serious uh, when that game comes around. Coming up next, an offense right out of tomorrow. For Cadillac, LC 14 next. R344 Z band. Pay attention to your assignment. It is the language of Florida State's future. A future so bright, Bobby Bowden's got to wear shades. The offense only loses two starters from last year's unit. That bunch finished fifth in the nation in scoring. So, there shouldn't be no reason why we should come out and click if now we have better athletes than before. But the future of this offensive line still has question marks. For one thing, can Morris go at all? He broke his foot just two weeks ago, but vowed he would be back for the opener. Until then, redshirt freshman Patrick McNeil is practicing in his place, next to All-American candidate Kevin Mancini. Center Robbie Baker's banged up as well. Off-season surgery on his right shoulder has stayed hurt. Reggie Dixon figures to be solid at the other guard, and Robert Stevenson can play anywhere. But the key is depth behind them. And behind that line, offensive coordinator Brad Scott has an interesting dilemma. Which weapons to use? More than anything else that maybe this offense has is the ability to hopefully to strike in a lot of areas. And a good place to start, a backfield some publications are calling the best in the country in the preseason. They give us that title right now, but the thing for us to do is to go out in game time and prove it. So I'll wait till then. As far as guys that can run the ball, come out of the backfield and catch the ball, the total group, I think this is probably the most diversified group. And Mr. Versatility among this versatile group is Junior Ampley. 825 yards on the ground, 360 more catching the ball last season, using a style that few in the country can match. Deceptive, I have to say. Um, I, I'm a slasher, I think. Uh, I'm not the fastest guy on the field. Um, I have good moves, quick feet, um, and I'm able to use my vision really well. And watch him change lanes. Look at that. Boom, one time. Boom, two time. Nobody early, it was touch football he'd be by these guys. Boom, three misses. Just trying to follow the amp is hard enough, so mm -hmm. I guess if you try to do what he does, you, you're working hard. But Jackson has shown he can get it done if called on, like this long run in the Seminoles' first scrimmage this preseason, and with a couple of hundred yard games in 1990. Now he's joined by the likes of Tiger McMillan and everybody's All-American Marquette Smith. And that's just the tailbacks. That's an exciting thing to think about, you know, really an honor, you know, being part of a great team like Florida State. At fullback, well, they don't come much better. Edgar Bennett spurned the NFL, though he would have been eligible to come back this year. It gives me an opportunity to show that I'm number one and, you know, I'm going to help this team, you know, do whatever I can to help the team win that championship. Overall, the magazines have given their thumbs up to this group as potentially the best backfield ever at FSU. Emphasize potentially. I have to think back on that 87 group when we had Marion Butts and Victor Floyd and Sammy Smith and Dexter Carter. There's three that's starting in the NFL. We have a lot of talent in those young guys, but they haven't proven it yet. Two years ago, it was the receivers who were ultra deep. Now the Fab Four's lone survivor, Lawrence Dossie, is gone. And it's some big shoes to fill. When Dawsey left, was, he left, you know, he took a lot with him, a lot part of our offense, but I think um, we've grown in experience. Fryer is fighting with Kez McCorvey for the split end spot, a sophomore and a freshman, while Shannon Baker or Eric Terrell figures to start at flanker. No seniors and no superstars, but a chance for the receivers to spread the wealth. With those type of guys, you know, it's easy for one guy each game to be on top. The talent's there. And uh, it's just now, you know, a couple of great catches and, and they'll be over the line, you know, like, like I was. The tight end position, total inexperience. And this was a battle right until the season opener to replace a duo that combined for 36 catches last season. Warren Hart, Marvin Farrell, and Lonnie Johnson all in the running. Each has different skills, but who could do it all? We've got some runners, we've got some hitters, we've got some guys that can catch the football. Mm -hmm. Now, can we do it all together? That has yet to be answered, as does this question. How will Dan Mowry respond to his first collegiate place kick? 
We'll find out about pressure soon enough. The opening on national television, and uh, you're following a little bit later uh, with some outstanding teams in Michigan up that way, plus they're moving the goal post stand a little bit on you, so there's a little bit of added pressure there. But those are the few question marks. The reality is... Expectations, um, I mean, they're really unlimited. We're going to have a very potent offense. It's going to be tough to stop us because we're going to keep the ball, we're going to air it out when we have to, we're going to run the ball when we have to, and uh, we can do both equally, as, equally well. The future is almost upon us with Florida State's offense. Don Evans reporting from Florida State. The outlook was brilliant for the Seminoles that fall, but here the score stood 10 to 9 and the visitors had the ball. The clock said 0-130 and on the bench there Casey sat. The fans could only hope and pray that he'd get his turn at bat. Ty Detmer, Ty Detmer of BYU. Ty Detmer. Tonight marks the beginning of Ty Detmer's final crusade through the battlefields of college football as he strives to add to his total of 42 NCAA records. In Provo, Utah, Air Detmer has been a smash hit. In Tallahassee, the chant is already, we're number one. And that claim has real substance. Quarterback Casey Weldon triggers an offense that dazzles one's imagination. Head coach Bobby Bowden just might have his first national championship. Tonight, the top-ranked Seminoles embark on a treacherous journey. First up, the offensive machine of Brigham Young in the second annual Disneyland Pigskin Classic. By Disneyland, where every day it's party time USA. Come celebrate. Season at East Rutherford, New Jersey, as Penn State whipped Georgia Tech. Tonight, 3,000 miles to the west, we are in Anaheim, California, as Raycom Network continues its kickoff tradition with the Disneyland Pigskin Classic. Tonight, top-ranked Florida State meets Heisman winner Ty Deckmer and the Cougars of Brigham Young. Good evening, everybody. I'm Phil Stone, along with a member of that Pony Express, way back there, along with Eric Dickerson. Of course, I'm talking about Craig James. Tonight, Craig, it is the story of the haves and the have-nots. For Florida State, they do everything well. They are indeed gifted. While for Brigham Young, I think the byword here in 1991 is going to be finesse football. It better be, because Brigham Young plays tonight, Florida State, later on down the schedule, UCLA, Penn State. They've got to find a way to offset some of the strength in their schedule. You know, Brigham Young, year in and year out, is so accustomed to dictating the pace of a college football game. Question tonight is, can they do it against the team with the credentials of Florida State? Well, Ty Detmer won the Heisman Trophy last season by dropping seven yards in the pocket, looking downfield, and eating defense's lunches. But tonight, he'll have to find a different way of doing that. He needs to move the pocket tonight, get out around the tackles, move around the corners, allow his wide receivers a chance to get open. For the top-ranked Seminoles of Florida State, they have won six games in a row since Casey Weldon has taken over as quarterback. They have proven commodities at every position, and I just wonder here in 1991 if Bobby Bowden just might not have that first national championship team. He'd better do it because we're all predicting that he's going to do it, and he's been predicted many times before. He's got a guy named Casey Weldon at quarterback that will be his main man that runs the offense. A very solid performer, 1,600 yards last year, 12 touchdowns, and that's after not playing the first six games of the season. This year, he's got a supporting cast as well, amply at tailback. A very gifted runner, tremendous field vision, can see where lanes are, and he's got that burst of speed that all great running backs have and able to get up in the secondary and make the long run. And he's not along in the backfield. Edgar Bennett, the fullback's probably the number one fullback in the NCAA. It's hard to believe, Craig. Florida State, three deep at every position in the offensive backfield. A year ago, BYU knocked off then top-ranked Miami. Can they do it again tonight? Of college football certainly creates an excitement that is unequaled in all of sports. We welcome you back to Anaheim Stadium here in Anaheim, California. If Florida State is to take their first step toward that initial national championship, Craig, what must they do? I think one thing, they've got to serve notice that they are indeed a collegiate powerhouse. Well, they have three things on that game plan. Number one, they've got to go out tonight and show the entire country that regardless of the strength of their schedule, they're going to dominate ball clubs. They are going to be 12-0 and and win the national championship. If they allow Ty Detmer to sit in the pocket and read their defense, they can forget about it. They can go get a drink of water because he will eat their lunch as well. And then controlling the clock, a good running game that they feel like Ampley and Edgar Bennett supplies them also opens up a good play-action pass offense. 
For the Cougars at Brigham Young, Craig, what must they do to upset the Seminoles? Where do they begin tonight? We talk about Ty Dutton or sitting in that pocket. Well, they need to move the pocket tonight because he'll have two separated shoulders again if he stays in that seven-step pocket. He needs to get out there and find a way to find open receivers. That running game tonight from BYU must be intact. 20 to 30 carries, and they've got to find a way. Counters, traps, deceptive things defensively they better come up with some kind of defensive scheme like four or five different kind of ideas to offset florida state's strength because they're balanced on offense and florida state can come at you in any way they want to well ty detmer told me yesterday at the kiwanis luncheon that this is indeed the biggest game of his collegiate career we'll be back with more after these messages from your local station this is the raycom network number 31 is brad clark number 23 is happy sikahima sounds and Maori approaches the football and the second annual Disneyland pigskin classic is underway it is Clark across the 20 yard line finds a hole dives up across the 26 and is tackled there so here come the Cougars of Brigham Young led by that man right there the Heisman Trophy winner from 1990 Ty Detmer and here is the fruit of the loom starting lineup for Brigham Young. Ty Detmer at quarterback. Peter Tui Polodu will see the ball an awful lot from his fullback position. The flanker is Micah Matsuzaki. Brigham Young lost their four top receivers to graduation. And there is a look at that very, very young offensive line. Only Brian May remains from the 1990 squad. From the 26-yard line, the Cougars on first down. Short drop. In and out of the hands at the 29-yard line. Eric Drage can't hold on. There's a defensive line for Florida State. They play the customary 3-4. They are strong up front. And if you like that group, the linebackers are even better. Marvin Jones, Shade Tree is his nickname. He's so big. Howard Dinkins, an outstanding outside backer. And the secondary, Buckley, McCarvey, John Davis, and Leon Fowler, pick them. They are all terrific. Second down in 10 from their own 26-yard line. Detmer play action rolls near side. Throws on the run. It is caught. Eric Hughes has it out across the 44-yard line and a first down for Brigham Young. Detmer's first completion goes for 18 before Kirk Carruthers knocks Hughes to the ground. We talked about Detmer moving, getting out of the pocket, rolls to the left side and finds Rex over the middle. An unproven tight end replacing an All-American from last year, Chris Miller. Excellent touch. That's why Ty Detmer won the Heisman Trophy last year. Byron Rex, 6'3", 230-pound junior. He's replacing a consensus All-American by the name of Chris Smith. Three wide receivers for Brigham Young at their own 44-yard line. In motion, it is Scott Charlton. Detmer, short drop, throws to the sideline and cannot find Micah Matsuzaki. Very risky pass right there. You can see that McCorvey and those guys are extremely well-schooled and know what to expect from Brigham Young. That little three-step timing pattern there, had it been on target, would have gone the other way. Second down now, the ball nosing the 44-yard line. Lavelle Edwards, for what a record in his 20th season at Brigham Young. Marvin Shade Tree Jones, a ferocious hitter. Bobby Bowden's been in a lot of contests in his time, so has Lavelle Edwards. Neither one of these ball clubs will be full too much tonight because talking to them in pregame, it was almost like they'd been watching films with the opposing teams. They had already supposed what the other guys were going to do. Boy, Bobby Bowden, he could run for just about any office in the Sunshine State and win it. From the 46-yard line, Detmer calling signals. Takes the seven-step drop under pressure. Stepped up, now delivers and overthrows Peter Tui Pelotu, who was wide open. Detmer doing a great job of avoiding the rush of Terrell Buckley and then simply overthrew his wide-open receiver. Right side of your screen, you'll see Buckley coming in on the blitz. He avoids that good pocket quickness, but just doesn't have the stamina to hold in there and the poise. And then he takes the big shot right after letting go of the football. Maybe that's why he couldn't really hone in on trying to hit Peter. 
And here is Earl Kaufman, senior punter out of Universal City, Texas. Seventh in the NCAA a year ago. Look at that average, 43.3. Good snap, plenty of time, and gets it away. That is Buckley, a 14. And he'll get nothing. A 40-yard punt. Mike Hoogan, the first man to get to him. And Florida State will see the football for the first time here in 1991 at their own 14-yard line. And there is the man who will trigger the Seminole offense, Casey Weldon. But boy, what a supporting cast. Edgar Bennett, fullback, could be a first-round draft choice next year. Camp Lee at the receiver spots. Terrell, Fryer, and Warren Hart. And the offensive line, everybody back from a year ago. Stevenson, Dixon, Baker, McNeil, and the big man who anchors it is Kevin Mancini. From the end zone, you'll see the over-pursuit of that over-aggressive Brigham Young. Young defense, that's what happens when you're a young defense on the first play of the game. And then Shannon Baker's got outstanding speed. Just an excellent job that time of Lee holding on and trying to allow his teammates to get over and stop the big touchdown run. And the teammate that did it was Derwin Gray from his weak safety spot. It is first down, play action. Weldon, he can unload it. Coming to the near side, it is caught at the 50-yard line. A 30-yard completion for Weldon. Terrell's that guy that's got a lot of unproven ability. He's been one that the coaches were looking forward to seeing how he performs. Crutchfield is the best defensive back in the secondary for BYU. And just outstanding second effort. Plenty of protection. The play action there set it up. And then backside comes Pitt, but just too late. Florida State for the first time tonight out of the eye formation. Weldon on first down at the 38. He'll roll left. Tucks it in, up the field he goes, inside the 30 and knocked down at the 27-yard line. And the man that got to him, Josh Arnold, the strong safety out of Mesa, Arizona. Like Florida State, BYU employs the 3-4, Pitts, Gomes, and Brad Hunter. The linebackers, Levitt, Rocky Beagle, he is terrific, Shad Hanson and Scott Giles. And the secondary core, they are veteran from a year ago. Crutchfield, Lee, Arnold, and Derwin Gray. They'll measure now. The ball nosing the 27-yard line. I think they got it, and they did by the length of the football. 12.36 to play here in the opening period from Anaheim, California. This second annual Disneyland Big Skin Classic. This opening drive right now, you're seeing the youth and inexperience in that Brigham Young defense right now. They just have been so aggressive that they're not looking and reading their keys and then making the play. First and 10. And somebody jumped, I believe it was Florida State offside. Somebody on that line stepped forward. Boy, that is a big offensive line. Robert Stevenson, I think he's the guilty party. Dead ball, procedure. Offense, repeat first down. Jack Gatto, the referee, all the officials tonight are from the Big West Conference. So now, instead of first and 10 at the 27, it is first and 15 from the 32. Casey Weldon, 6'1", 200-pound senior, went to high school in Tallahassee. Play action, Weldon looking downfield. It is caught. Out of the backfield, Antley, and oh, can he burn inside the 20-yard line and is knocked down territory or did he step out of bounds out around the 28 i think he might have stepped out they're going to step him mark him out of bounds at about the 28 yard line but this shows how individually talented that amp lee is a good job of the brigham young defense coming in putting pressure on but lee's got such great speed that he's able to outrun that initial support get around there and just steps out of bounds lee is a very tough talented football player the man, six foot, 195 pounds, out of Chipley, Florida. To the near side, it is the Amster once more. Turns the corner to 25 and down near second base. So a 
apparent right now that Florida State's team speed is a mismatch, mismatch on Brigham Young's defense. I mean, they are just running around the corner. That time it was very well defense. Brigham Young had shifted to that side of the field. You would have expected them to make the play, but they just couldn't physically keep up with them. Now one goofy fan in attendance tonight. From <laughs> Disneyland. Boy, we saw I think of a few up here. <laughs> all the characters last night at the tailgate back. Third down and about four. There's the counter. It is a first down. Who else but Ed Gerbeni, 6'1", 212-pound senior fullback out of Jacksonville, Florida. Rated the top fullback in the country. Misdirection. Everybody follows Amp Lee. Here comes backside over Edgar Bennett. And once he gets down there, cover the football up. You know you're not going too much further. And just pile those knees into the chest of those defensive backs. Edgar Bennett. Talk about versatile. He blocks like Lydell Mitchell used to block. He runs like a Pete Johnson. And he can catch like Kellen Winslow. Not a bad package. That's why they say he probably will be the first fullback taken in the draft next year. Shannon Baker goes wide to the left. First down and goal. It is Bennett. Look at him turn to the three. Josh Arnold from his strong safety position is in there. As Josh coming Jared at you. This is what it looks like for Shad Henson, number 50, right inside. You see these high knee drive coming up. If you're a defensive back, you don't want those things to hit you in the face mask because then all of a sudden you're at Disneyland and you don't want to be there. <laughs> Second down and goal now from the Brigham Young four-yard line. Keep your eyes on the up back. The man right behind Casey Weldon. It is Edgar Bennett. This time it is Amp Lee who will try the left side. Can't find a hole and is down at the four. Bill Bryant led the charge along with Shad Hansen, the junior linebacker out of Danville, California. Bobby Bowden asking, what was that? Brigham Young's got to make a commitment tonight that they will not allow their outside linebackers to be hooked. They've got to make sure that they string the play out and then excellent team pursuit from the inside. They've got to have that if they're going to have any chance at all of slowing down Florida State's offense. Now third down in four. And Weldon, I believe, is going to call a timeout and he wants to talk things over with head coach Bobby Bowden. The clock will stop with 9.51 to play. In the opening period, we'll be back to Anaheim Stadium with more after this from Anheuser-Busch. Took the opening kickoff, couldn't do a thing with the football, three and out. And then Florida State took the punt and has marched down to the Brigham Young four-yard line. It is third down and goal. Casey Weldon, the trigger man for Florida State, operating behind that huge line. Stevenson, Dixon, Baker, McNeil, and Kevin Mancini. In motion, it is Baker. Weldon. It is tough touchdown. Edgar Bennett. From the end zone, they fake the counter play up to the top. Gives everybody to go over and support Ampli. Edgar Bennett comes clean. There is a man responsible for Edgar Bennett in the flat. You talk about a balanced offensive attack, that's what they're talking about when they say that. It's somebody that can spread the defense and take advantage of all 11 players on their unit. Here is Dan Mowry. He is a redshirt freshman. And the kick is good. So the clock stops with 9.47 to play. Florida State Seminoles ranked number one in the nation out to a 7-0 lead. We'll be back with more of the Disneyland Pigskin Classic after this from Fruit of the Loom. American candidate here in 1991. How about that? Doing the same backfield, Amp Lee. Who's that move? Just send a whole pot load of All-American patches to Florida State. <laughs> Bob Hope, you think he'll get to know the Florida State team this year? <laughs> <laughs> Now, Tigger enjoying what he has seen thus far here in the first six minutes of this ball game. Dan Mowry of Florida State is set to kick it away for the second time in this ball game. It is Kathy Sikahima, number 23 of Brigham Young, and Brad Clark standing at their own two-yard line. And for the second time, but I can see holding one at the nine. Turn by Clark. Part of the 
does a nice job of setting up the middle return. He starts up into the field, sees the daylight, and then will get out to the outside. Not a lot of foot speed, but a consistent, solid player. A guy that gets the ball up, holds on to it, and doesn't turn it over. Second time tonight, Brigham Young's offense has come on to the football field. Decker thus far, one of four for 18 yards. Brigham Young with a lone first down. Flags fly, free play for Brigham Young out across the 41-yard line. And it's Peter Tui Pelotu senior fullback out of San Mateo, California. Flag is going to go against Florida State. There is Bobby Bowden. Career record entering his 26th year of coaching, 205, 74, and 3. Detmer using that voice as a, as a weapon. Encroachment. First down. So many quarterbacks forget that they have the opportunity to pull defenses off and use that voice as a sincere weapon. He's got to do that tonight. He's, that's almost like having a 12th man on the ball club. Another fellow who used to be pretty good at using that voice wearing those same colors, John Unitas. He was a master. First down now in five for Brigham Young at their own 43-yard line. Denver, short drop. It is complete. Across the 45-yard line, inside the 40-yard line. And Brigham Young has a first down. It is Byron Rex with his second big reception of the evening. Two receptions for that man right there, totaling now 37 yards. Looks like a blown assignment there. Rex comes out of the tight end slot, wide open. Nobody's there. Detmer, you talk about him being a field general. He understands and sees everything happening in, happening in a secondary. Rex is a guy that, if he continues to play like this, could fill the shoes of Chris Miller that departed last year. Now Chris Smith had 1,100 yards in receptions as a Cougar, most by anyone who has ever played tight end at the college level. Boy, Seminoles jumping everywhere. Well, I'll tell you, with the way the Seminoles were jumping, you'd have thought somebody was pounding a drum. If you listen to Detmer's voice out there, he's going on a go count. Go, go, go. And that lineman, when they leave... Dead ball, procedure... Offense, repeat first down. Exactly the defense. They have the opportunity, if they do not hit that offensive lineman, to get back and reset. The left tackle over here jumps. He's the one that goes ahead and left guard raises up there. Herring just has got to sit in those trenches and take advantage of that miscue on the defensive line. So instead of being first and five, it is now first and 15 for the Cougars of Brigham Young. goes to Tui Polodu, the fullback, 5'11", 215-pound senior, and he is knocked off his spikes by Reggie Freeman, outside linebacker from Clewiston, Florida. Another way to recognize defensive team speed or overall team speed is to watch when that running back from the opposing team gets into the hole. What looks like a big hole is closed quickly. Florida State just, boom, they jumped on him what should have been a five or six-yard game. set now for the Cougars on second down and 12 from the 40. Detmer with time and plenty of it. Comes near side, loses the football and is picked up by Florida State. straight back in the pocket nobody has opened downfield the wide receivers could not come off of their men Simpson right here always around the football comes in and makes the play Reggie Freeman gets in there first Boom, goes down to the football nowhere for Detmer to go and that's what the Florida State coaches were talking about hey I'd like to see Detmer in the pocket we'll get to it Freeman causes the fumble Sanders picks it up Florida State first down there is Edgar Bennett near the Brigham Young 40. Boy, uh, an unhappy Ty Detmer had all the time in the world, and to Florida State's credit, he had his receivers covered like blankets. That's who he's calling, the receivers coach, saying, hey, uh, dump a swim out there, come and do something, go hide behind the water bucket, but you got to get open, I'm getting hit back here. Carl Simpson made that fumble recovery from his right defensive end spot. And Lavelle Edwards already beginning to feel the sting of this Florida State defense. Edgar Bennett with 
the football, and Shad Hanson sniffed it out perfectly. Nice job of Florida State's calling right now. They know the blitz is coming, and had Shad Hanson not wrapped up and held onto those legs of Bennett, that would have been a big-time play right there. That's the responsibility of one of the pulling guards to look up Hanson, find his number, and go block him. Hanson, the junior out of Danville, Connecticut. Shad, a year ago, teaming with Rocky Beagle, and they're back here. 1991 at those inside linebacker spots for Brigham Young. Third down and 11 for Weldon and the Seminoles. Bennett is wide open. He's got the football. <laughs> Brigham Young comes with a blitz. Scott Giles realizes he messed up. He did not come off. Bennett is all by himself down the middle of the field. If you're going to blitz, make sure if you're in the secondary or a linebacker that you pick your man up and go get him. That time Bennett was not picked up by anybody. It looks like Arnold is trying to recuperate and come back down the field, which he eventually does, but it's too late. That's a big play for them. First down and 10 from the 15-yard line. The Seminoles are on the move again. They lead it 7-0. Just churn for the Brigham Young seven. Derwin Gray on the stop. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the Raycom Network. You're watching WCTV, Channel 6, Thomasville, Tallahassee. Twilight in Southern California. Along with Craig James, I'm Phil Stone. Clock is running here in the first period. Florida State on the first drive of the night. Punched it in on a four-yard scoring strike from Weldon to Bennett, and the Seminoles are pounding the drum again. Bennett, head to head with Cougars at the five, and pushes his way another yard down near the three. Lenny Gomez, the nose guard, was the first man Bennett went helmet to helmet with. The beauty of having a power game like Florida State has is that once you get inside the 20-yard line, inside the 10-yard line, and it's short yardage or goal line, you can match up man for man with anybody in the country and run them over. You know, two years ago, as a sophomore, Bennett won FSU's Decleater Award. Now, a Decleater Award <laughs> usually goes to a defensive ball player for just knocking guys off their cleats. A fullback wins it two years ago. What a job this is right here. Oh, boom. No chance. He's on the back. Mowry from the hold of Brad Johnson will try and make it a 14 to nothing Florida State lead. He lets it go, and he misses it wide right. One thing we want to mention, rule change here in 1991, the goal posts are five feet narrower now in college football. Back with more from beautiful Anaheim Stadium. Florida State after the missed point after out in front of Brigham Young 13 to nothing and Bobby Bowden has to be awfully happy two possessions 15 plays a pair of touchdowns and a nine yard per play average we talked about the game plan before the ball game they have done all three of the above they are graded out 100 percent I believe they have everybody's attention around the NCAA right now they've been all over Ty Detmer forced the turnover that just converted into a touchdown and they're controlling the clock they're keeping Brigham Young off the field third time it will be Clark this time from the eight Picked up at the 20 yard line momentum carries him out near the 24 and here comes Detmer for the third time tonight scoring driver of a result of the turnover in the pocket Detmer not able to get the pass away he's hit from Freeman the fumble recovered by Simpson and Florida State very opportunistic they take it down and score there is a man who a year ago pitched 41 touchdown passes in his career in Provo, Utah, 86 touchdown passes and counting. He needs two more right now, at least. <laughs> Three wideouts to 
to the right side for Brigham Young. Detmer looks left. Now back to the right. He's going to go long. And it is intercepted by Terrell Buckley. He led the Seminoles in 1990 with six. He has ten career now. Just five away from Florida State's career record holder in interceptions, Monk Bonasorti. BYU's offense is built around timing. Right now, you've got two receivers within five yards. They've got to get away from there. And then the athletic skills of Florida State are superior to the wide receivers of Brigham Young. They go up and pull the ball down. Now, Lavelle Edwards knows if his quarterback has an Achilles heel, it is the propensity to throw interceptions. 28 last year in 562 attempts. From the 48-yard line, Florida State with excellent field position. They already lead it 13 to nothing. Edgar Bennett, the man who has scored both seminal touchdowns, is hit by Shad Hansen. For Brigham Young right now, they just need to find a way to slow this machine down and, and try to gain their composure. They're a young ball club. They have more talent than they had last season, but they just don't have any playing experience. A lot of these guys are just coming back from two years of mission work. So they need to find a way to slow this thing down so that they can learn as they go but not be down 28 to nothing. Eric Tewell splits wide to the left. Shannon Baker, the flanker, is wide right. The pitch goes to the far side. Ian Lee turns the corner. Big hole inside the 30-yard line. A flag is down. And Lee is bounced down at the 14. A flag is down at the 41-yard line. Derwin Gray took Lee out of bounds on the far side. They said he was a slashing style of a runner. Holding against Florida State, the ball comes back. But that's the kind of play that really demoralizes the defense. They're, they're over there watching number 42 and 22 run past them like a jet airplane. I'll tell you, if Amp Lee gets two steps, Greg, the next guy in motion is the scoreboard operator. <laughs> oh. Offense, holding, during the run, repeat second down. That's Lonnie Johnson, the tight end. Number 85 to the left side. He pulls his hands out. He's got the jersey in his hands. And if you ever wonder if officials have good eyes, right there how they pick that out in that kind of traffic is remarkable. Scott Giles was held up. I don't think it would have made any difference, though. Amp Lee was going to run past him regardless of the holding. They would have had it. First and 10 at the 14. Now it is second down and 13 at the 49-yard line. Florida State with the football. They lead it 13-0. Bennett. Well, I'll tell you, if he stays healthy, Greg, you said it at the outset, he could be a number one pick in next year's NFL draft. I tell you what, who he reminds me of right now is Roger Craig, the way he picks his knees up, that pumping knee drive. I had a chance to visit with him before the game on the field, and he's got those thick thighs, and he's just a good, kind person. Uh, you know, solid, solid in character, and uh, if he keeps those knees healthy, he's got a long, productive NFL career. What a load at the bottom of your screen. Baker and Terrell, they are burners. Weldon coming to the near side, and the man he's looking for is Shannon Baker, and overthrows him out of bounds. It goes. Boy, in hot pursuit, Tony Crutchfield, the left corner for Brigham Young. If he would have caught it, it would have been a 13-7 ball game. Coming up with fourth down, Bobby Bowden, those guys are talking and on the sidelines. They're going to go ahead and punt it, which is wise because you've got Brigham Young down. Go ahead and kick them. Put them maybe inside the 10-yard line. Keep the field possession that you have right now. Bowden knows, too, Florida State has never had a great punting team, so he knows Scott Player, if anything, is going to put it only downfield 15 or 20 yards. Player, high snap. And it's exactly what I'm talking about. Short punt. It'll bounce at the 20. Takes a seminal roll. And the 10-yard line, down it goes. So Brigham Young will take the football with 3.08 to play in the first period here at Anaheim Stadium in the shadows of Disneyland. Been all top-ranked Florida State. Travel range through Northwest. Now proudly serving Asia with 80 non-stops a week from across the United States. Northwest Airlines, our job is helping you do yours. Last year, the Cougars of Brigham Young were 10 and 3, including that 28-21 victory over national champs and then number one ranked Miami. 
And boy, what a ball game that was in Provo, Utah. I'll say Brigham Young's a kind of offense, Craig. You can get them down, and teams have gotten them down last year. Washington State had them down 29 to 7 at home in Provo, only to see Brigham Young come back and win it 50 to 36. So they may be down 13 to nothing now, but they are a quick strike football team. And that's the kind of things that Detmer needs to be explaining to these young Brigham Young players. The short side of the field. It is Peter Tuipolo to the fullback. And he rustles out across the 13 and dropped there. Ken Nothing. Alexander, the backup strong side linebacker, the first man to reach him. Nothing wrong with that kind of play. You're, you're backed up to your end zone. Go ahead, run one or two plays. Make it third down in five. Nothing wrong with that because you've got a good timing offense. Just be patient. Don't try to air the thing out and have somebody else Buckley go up and intercept another ball. Bryce Doman, the flanker, goes to the top of your screen. The pitch also goes that way. And it's Scott Carlson, the halfback, and he doesn't get anything. Tenacious pursuit by that front seven of Florida State. Ostozuski, Cheney, Simpson, Freeman, Willie Poldo, Marvin Jones, and Howard Dinkins. To have a successful outside running game in the toss sweep, you've got to have earned the respect inside. That time, everybody is running outside. They know they've got the foot speed to make the adjustment to come back inside if Charlton had cut back. Go at these guys. We need. We talked about the counters and the traps. That's what they've got to do. Third down and 11. In the shadow of his own goalpost, Detmer. Apparently some confusion on the left side. Detmer rolls near side, gets a good block. Now turns around on his own end zone. It is cut by Tui Palodu. He has the first down out across the 23-yard line. And oh, what an effort by the big fullback. A flag is down. And it is right at the point of the tackle, which usually, Craig, might indicate a face mask or a personal foul against Florida State. And you're talking about big plays and first downs and adding on to that with the personal foul. 13-yard reception, Tui Palodu. Dead ball. out of the hole in a trap right there. Tupelotto holds on to the football. The late hit will come in. He's down from behind. Not really that violent of a hit, but one of those that, hey, it helps get Brigham Young back into this game, potentially. Wide to the left, it is split in Micah Matsuzaki. Deckard inside. There's the counter that Craig spoke of at the top of our telecast. It is Tui Polodu. And you get the feeling that the Cougars are trying to get a little respect themselves with this drive. Watch the right guard, right tackle. The OT counter. He comes back inside, sees that that's his running path, and then gets up in there. A little more foot speed, and he's into the secondary a little bit quicker. But that's the difference between a good running game team and a passing team. BYU opts for the pass. Cougars' top running back from 1990, fullback Peter Tui Polodu. Second down and two now from their own 46-yard line. And I'll tell you what. Somebody off in a hurry. Dead ball. Procedure. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat second down. Left guard again, Tom Latt. He's got to sit in there and just be patient. Boy, they come flying off the ball over here, Jerry, and he just, if he had sat in there, Latt, you're going to get a free play or you're going to get a first down because they were second down in two or three. And now it is second down and seven. Mike Doman wide to the right. Matsuzaki splits wide left. Detmer, play action, rolls right. It is caught. Matsuzaki has it out across the 45, near the 46, Terrell Buckley. All-American out of Pascagoula, Mississippi, on the tackle. Composure, competitive, those are some of the words they use for Ty Detmer. That's what he needs right now. He needs to convey that onto his teammates. Hang in there, fellas. We can do it. Let's chip away at them. Talk about the penalty, the offside call. Now it's third and two, where they were second down and two. I talked about Brigham Young's quick strike potential. A year ago, eight of their 13 games, they put 45 points or more on the scoreboard. 
that is the end of the first quarter. We'll be back with more of the Disney Lessons. Did you go up this spring with Captain Chamberlain? Indeed I did. Joel, let me sit down and take the controls of that beautiful airship. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. I'm glad I wasn't in the air that day. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what a thrill it is to fly aboard that Goodyear blimp. Beautiful shots they supply us. I'll tell you, somebody else who would like to get something in the air right now. It is number 14 in the blue and white. Ty Detmer is Cougars down 13 to nothing as we begin the second period of play here from Anaheim Stadium. In motion, it is Bryce Doman. Detmer with time. Here they come. He unloads, puts it up. It is cut by the Suzuki. to watch Detmer's eyes, what he's seeing. He knows he's under pressure. He knows he's got an open receiver that somebody has blown Mitsuzaki's coverage. Absolutely a good job there of Mitsuzaki just holding on to the football. 33-yard gain. Ooh. Boy, there's a bell ringer right there. Leon Fowler had him. Errol McCorvey finally brought down the junior from Honolulu, Matsuzaki. First down, Brigham Young at the Seminole 21. Detmer audibleizing at the 21, first down. There is Tui Palomo, he can go! Touchdown, Brigham Young! Florida State defense spread out right now. You see excellent job of keeping his eyes open and then everybody's in the corner covering the wide receivers. The wide receivers, rather than turning around and physically blocking their men, they run them to the back corners of the flags. Peter Tui Pelotu puts Brigham Young on the board. And here is Earl Kaufman from the hold of Joe Evans. It's down. Kaufman, good contact, and it is good. 14.28 to play in the first half, and the Cougars are on the scoreboard. Seminoles, the three returning offensive starters, and one of the guys that needed to make a big play. He does it right here on this touchdown. As you can see, he keeps his eyes open. They block everything to the inside, which allows him to get up in there, and he's got the speed once he gets into the secondary to make the run. More to see the speed than I thought he had. You know, as a freshman, he broke his ankle in study hole. I tell you, you let those desks get a step on you, they can cause big problems. <laughs> They used to hurt my nose when I'd fall asleep nodding on them. <laughs> Earl Kaufman to kick it away. Tiger McMillan and Mark Kitt Smith, a pair of freshmen, back to receive for Florida State. Here is the Tiger. McMillan at his own 14. Dives out across the 27, near the 28. Brigham Young, 89 yards. It took him seven plays, three minutes and 40 seconds to find Pater, Peter Tui Paludu on the draw. 21 yards downfield. Now, don't forget, stay with us, judge along with us. Craig and I will be selecting our Disneyland Pigskin Classic Player of the Game late in the fourth period tonight. Right now, we got a couple of candidates, Tui Paludu and Edgar Bennett. Wide to the right goes Matt Pryor, and I mean he is about five strides from the sideline at the top. Casey Weldon, the give it to Edgar Bennett. He gets out to the right side. He has got running room, but not for long. Derwin Gray missed a big tackle about three yards from the line of scrimmage. A 12-yard scamper for Bennett before Josh Arnold tackled him. Good job of Edgar Bennett realizing the defense had been drawn to the inside and then running through the tackler. Don't allow any one guy. Derwin Gray finally comes there, but you've got to run through those arm tackles. There he is, Edgar Bennett. He has both of the Seminoles touchdowns tonight. Camp Lee to the left side. Look how quickly those Seminole running backs get out around the corners. Derwin Gray on the tackle, and a yellow flag is down at the 43-yard line. I believe it's going to go against Florida State. Bobby Pound realizes 
that that's not the kind of things that obtain national championships. On the offense, during the run, repeat first down. So bring it back. It'll now be first down and about 16. 73 wide, the left tackle. Watch him if he stays in our screen. He turns his man, but his arms get outside. It looks like the defensive lineman is holding more than that. Reggie Dixon just, you've got to keep those arms inside a defender. 16 from the 32-yard line. Pitch goes to the right side. It is Amp Lee. Jumps over one would be Petzler and out of bounds. He goes. Oh, Randy Block, a red shirt freshman from Rexburg, Idaho, led the Cougar charge. We are just about two miles from the Magic Kingdom, Disneyland. I'll tell you, with a game like we have tonight, it's a wonder that place isn't a ghost town tonight. We had a pretty good time over there yesterday, but we were in our suits going through the log ride. It looked kind of funny. Never do that again. 12.57 <laughs> to play here in the first half. The top-ranked Seminoles of Florida State out in front of Brigham Young, 13 to 7. That is Terrell in motion. Weldon looking for him in and out of the hands of Matt Pryor at the 43-yard line. Brigham Young finally beginning to apply pressure to that man. Number 12, Matt Fryer up top, comes across. He's got to realize the pass is coming and then concentrate on watching the ball into his hands. It's almost like he closed his eyes. You know, they, they talk about catching the football in your hands. Hey, catch the football, whether it's in your tummy or what. Bring it in. I'll tell you, Seminole fans will remember the pair of catches he had a year ago against arch-rival Florida. One, a 54-yarder in heavy traffic. Weldon rolling left side. Throws to the near side. It is cut. Eric Terrell, the junior from Tallahassee, got me high school on the reception. It's good for 16 yards. As they roll to the left side, they've got plenty of protection, but Terrell comes back and gets a little open, gets a little field of vision for Weldon to throw to him, and then he holds on to the football, something that Matt Pryor didn't do the previous play. Weldon, 6 of 8, 80 yards, and a touchdown. It went to Edgar Bennett is running 12 21 to play first half action wide to the right is eric terrell blazing speed play action weldon he'll come to the near side it is baker he can't hold on as weldon overthrew him at the 30 yard line and it appears as if that defensive line of brigham young hunter gomes greg pitts is finally finding a scheme to apply pressure to Casey Weldon. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the Raycom Network. This is WCTV, Channel 6, Thomasville, Tallahassee. Second down and 10, Florida State. Counter, Bennett gets two, maybe three. Scott Giles, number 47, the right side outside linebacker on the tackle. Tell you, he was third on the Cougars a year ago in sacks, Greg, and he only played a half season. He was the key to stopping that play right there because he was the guy that saw the OT counter coming at him. He had got the guy, he blocked, maintained the inside commitment to the running back, and then he fell back into the play. That's recognition. The smarter this team becomes and the quicker they become smarter, the better off they're going to be. Third down in eight. Caught by Lee, and he could go. Twenty-eight yards before Irwin Lee, from his right corner spot, can run him down. Amp Lee, world-class speed. The second time that they have been caught with the blitz, and nobody going out covering somebody. Earlier was Edgar Bennett. Great catch. The coaches say that Amp Lee is the best wide receiver on the field tonight, and he's got tremendous concentration. Watch him turn his body around, watch the football, and bring it into his possession. Outstanding job of watching and concentrating on the football. Penn State with the big season-opening victory last night against Georgia Tech. They know what Amp Lee can do. Blockbuster Bowl a year ago, Amp Lee led the Seminoles to a big win over Joe Paterno's Pitney Lions, and there he comes again. And he's got six, maybe seven more 
to the Brigham Young 13-yard line. Camp Lee, incidentally, MVP of that Blockbuster Bowl. That's some great games on Raycom. Blockbuster Bowl, the Freedom Bowl last year, Colorado State, Oregon. Camp Lee, at this point in the season, they'll have to be a little fatigued. It takes time for running backs and receivers, defensive backs, to get in the proper kind of game condition. Brigham Young, 13-yard line. Inside it goes. It is Edgar Bennett as he runs it right up behind McNeil and Kevin Mancini, but Chad Hansen slid through to bring him down. Yeah. They'll mark it at the 9-yard line. That's the beauty of having two good running backs. That time he knew Amp Lee was tired, so he headed off inside Edgar Bennett, which will give time for Amp to catch his breath, and then you toss the football and you work the outside. Well, a very, very young football fan here in Anaheim, California, having a ball with Goofy. And right now, Florida State is trying to go up some more, and it is Amp Lee once again. Boy, a year ago, Lee averaged 9.82 points per game, fourth in the nation in scoring. He touched the ball 158 times in carrying it, 34 more times catching it, and did not cough it up once. Florida State was plus 21 in turnovers last season. That's amazing. They'll need that same kind of productivity this year if they want to win the NCAA championship. Second down in goal now from the Brigham Young Six. Wide to the right is Fryer. It is Shannon Baker to the bottom of your screen. Well, bootleg left side. He'll throw for it. It is caught. Touchdown, Florida State. Eric Terrell. right there and then hides the football he comes around watch his shoulders get squared up so that he can throw out here to the flat Terrell had moved up into the end zone and then came back towards the quarterback so that he could make the reception 5 11 180 one of the top sprinters in Florida when he left high school Florida State they are gonna go for two from the near hash mark they lead it 18 to 7. Weldon. Over the top. It is good. Cut by Matt Fryer in Florida State now. Up the ante to 21-7. That'll stop the clock with 8 minutes and 56 seconds left before intermission. Florida State back with that two-touchdown advantage. 21 to 7. We talked about the array of offensive weapons and we saw another one here terrell was the key man in the drive it was third and ten earlier midfield he made the first down reception for 11 11 yard gain right there matt fryer missed this play earlier in this uh, possession as well he comes back inside this time a timing pattern watches the ball into his hands and makes the catch well now that you've started the college football season with raycom remember you can wrap up the season with us as well raycom is pleased to present the blockbuster bowl on saturday december 28th and then Craig and I will be with you for the Freedom Bowl. Eric Terrell, the 511 junior out of Tallahassee High School. Mowry, end over end, comes to the near side. And into the end zone it will go. Somebody better cover it, and Sakahima will. Touchback. BYU will take it at their own 20-yard line. Now Florida State a moment ago in 73 yards in 11 plays. Weldon to Terrell. From six yards away, 5.32 off the clock. And now Brigham Young takes over with 8.56 left in Florida State, doing exactly what they wanted to do. Eat up the clock when they have the football, get Brigham Young to take it, and make them punt it away. And that is precisely what has taken place thus far in the first half. Out of the eye, Brigham Young, down over center. It goes to the hatchback. And oh, is Scott Charlton dropped in a hurry. Well, coming up at halftime, stay tuned for a special presentation to tonight's head coaches, Bobby Bowden and Lavelle Edwards, by international diamond jewelry manufacturer I.B. Goodman. What's the chance of us going down and being a part of that? 
tell you what. I'll go with you. You lead. <laughs> As a recipient. <laughs> Just shy of the 20-yard line. It is now second down and 11. Block running 821 to play. First down. In motion, it is Doman. Detmer rolls left. He could run it. He said he'll let it go. Puts it up for grabs. Diving catch. No. Doman got his hands on the football and couldn't hold it. Nice job of getting to the outside in the corner, and then Detmer just overthrows the ball. Dolman would have made an outstanding catch had he come up with that, but those are the kind of plays that you've got to make from Brigham Young. We talked about him getting out of the pocket. He's 5 of 10 so far, 87 yards, one interception, but these are the ones that are a must if you're going to maintain any kind of hopes in staying in this ball game. and heard. Oh, that's an oak branch hitting you off the shade tree. <laughs> Fourth down and ten. Here is Earl Kaufman to let it fly. He averaged 43 yards a punt a year ago. His longest was 61 yards in 1990. Good snap pressure, and he gets it away. End over end. Buckley at the 44. He won't get much. I'll tell you, Buckley is a guy you want to cover in a hurry. Three career touchdowns on punt returns. On the stop was Brad Clark. Eight, make it 7.58 to play in the first half. We're the state's top-ranked Seminoles out in front of Brigham Young, 21-7. to Let's check our Gillette storyline here thus far in the ballgame. Florida State, a pair of touchdown drives. Make it three touchdown drives. Edgar Bennett has got two of them. He's a strong runner. He's also caught the football for one of those touchdowns. The turnover from Brigham Young, one of those led to a touchdown. Detmer just 5 of 11, 87 yards, one interception, and one fumble. Lots of pressure being supplied by Florida State's defense. Florida State Seminole fans, they are in abundance in Southern California tonight. Here comes Florida State once more. Matt Fryer is split wide to the left. Eric Terrell, he has a touchdown. He is wide right. Pitch goes far side. It is Amp Lee. This time he will not find the hole. Lee tried to run it up behind the strong side guard and tackle Dixon and Robert Stevenson, but Jared Levitt brought him down. Brigham Young that time went back to their traditional 3-4 defense. They had been going with a four-man front, trying to confuse and disorient the Florida State offense. That wasn't working, so now you go back to the bread and butter. Things that got you into a strong team. Florida State just dominating the running game. Look for the play-action pass to come into play now. Second down and eight from the 49. There's the counter. It is Bennett, and oh, what a job by Brigham Young's big front line. And again, that was Jared Lovett from his outside linebacker spot. Lovett back from neck surgery a year ago. He's a senior out of Soda Springs, Idaho. Between him and Levitt, they're the keys this afternoon. They have got to make sure that they maintain containment. They cannot allow these guys around the corner. Levitt doing a nice job of keeping that outside shoulder open. First time tonight that we have seen Florida State stop for a loss. It is now third down and 11. What happened? With that kind of hit, I ought to be rewarded. Talking about de-cleaters, he's de-cleated, but he also demoralized the Brigham Young defense right there. Weldon takes a shot himself. That time, Brock comes in and ooh, puts the hurt on him. Chin strap over the mouth. Can't breathe. Give me air. From the 31-yard 31 31-yard 31 line, Florida State. They are on the move with 6.15 to play on the first half. Out of the eye, it is Bennett, the up back, and Lee is a tailback play action, Weldon is going for it all. Baker cannot hold it. Terrific 
perfect one-on-one -on -one defense by a left corner, Tony Crutchfield, coming off knee surgery. Shannon Baker's got a lot of speed, but he needs to run through this ball. He leaves his feet. There's no reason to do that. Continue running and then put your hands up at the last moment. Catch the ball and run on down underneath the goalpost and say your prayer. A perfectly thrown football. Tony Crutchfield, three interceptions last year. He too coming off knee surgery. Second down and ten. The Cougars have simply got the pressure well. The short drop throws the out pattern. Terrell in and out of his hands. Eric Terrell taking over the position that Lawrence Dawsey elevated to an art form in Tallahassee. Dawsey was a part of a great, uh, what they call them, the receiving mob. Yeah. These guys, there were four of them in the past that were possession-type receivers, but now Baker and Terrell bring a new dimension to the receiving cores here at Florida State. Speed, they can break down the secondary coverage, just like Baker did on the last play. He just dropped the pass. Now third down and 10 for Florida State. Big, big play for Brigham Young's defensive unit. And now Weldon wants to call his second time out of the first half. It comes with 6.03 to play here in the first half. Don't go away. We're coming back with more after these messages from your local station. 6.03 to play here in the first half. Florida State ranked number one in the nation on top of Brigham Young 21-7. Here come the Seminoles on third down and 10. FSU is averaging 16 yards tonight on every third down play. Penalty will go against Florida State. Now it's going to be at least third and 15. Major, offense, five-yard penalty, repeat third down. 16 yards averaging on third down. You usually talk about percentages on third down. These, this team here, seven plays, 115 yards. Tremendous. I mean, well, it's third and 15, so they, they got a chance of making it. Not altogether surprising either, Craig, because a year ago, Florida State successful on 41% of their third down situations. That is an astonishing number. Third and 15. Four down linemen. Over the middle it goes. Terrell's got it, and he can burn it. First down and more to the Brigham Young 14-yard line. 23 yards on that third down conversion. Why would Brigham Young want to come with a blitz right now? You've got a team deep into it, the little underneath, like a middle screen. Did the linemen get out in there? Terrell absolutely has great speed himself and has a chance to make the big play for the first down. You'll see how these defensive linemen just run right past. No clue as to what's happening. They've got to realize what's going on, peel back, and try to get into the, to the uh, pursuit of the play. 22-yard pickup for Florida State. It's first down at the BYU 14. Here comes Bennett again. He's got two touchdowns. He's inside the five and holds his way to the four. From the end zone, coming right at you this time, Edgar Bennett with that high knee drive. Watch him cut back inside, pick the legs up, run through the arm tackles, cover up the football, and then Matt Fryer takes a shot on the knee. We talked about Amp Lee only fumbling, or not fumbling at all last year. Edgar Bennett had only one fumble in all of 1990. Look at those numbers. 120 yards total offense so far, two touchdowns, and we have not even completed the first half. Second down and one inside the five. There is the answer. Touchdown, Florida State. Off sweep. Watch out. He kind of wiggles those hips and kind of slides through the crease. We talked in pregame about having acceleration and getting up into the hole. He's got tremendous vision. You start to the outside, the crease opens up, and you hit that first daylight. I'll tell you, for Florida State, that's like a pair of 30 odd sixes in your backfield. You stop one, you take one of the guns away, they got another one just as good to come at you. A point after by Dan Mowry is good, and the clock stops with 4.42 to play here before intermission. And 
And now the Seminoles out in front of the Cougars, 28 to 7. Through to the loom, we keep America's men comfortable. Casey Weldon, he has led the Seminoles to four touchdowns. And you look at his numbers in comparison to Ty Detmer. Heisman hopefuls Weldon will be one. If he takes his team undefeated national championship, he should be considered for the Heisman Trophy this year. David Klingler out of the University of Houston will be another one. Detmer, he'll have to have a better season than this right now. And there are a lot of folks watching him, seeing how he'll respond to winning it last year. If you'll recall, after winning the award, they got blown out by Hawaii, and then they went and played in the, in the Holiday Bowl and were blown out by Texas A&M. Jamal Wills and Brad Clark back deep for Brigham Young, and it is Clark at the five-yard line. A flag is down. It'll be an illegal block against Brigham Young. Number 31, LaVon Brown got a huge block right in the back. Flipping on the receiving team during the run back, half the distance to the goal, First down. Nice job of coaching, telling the kicker to kick it directionally to the corner. Brad Clark had two nice returns only earlier in the ball game, and that time they kicked it to the corner and didn't give him anywhere to run to. Florida State a moment ago, win 53 yards in eight plays, three minutes and 16 seconds to get their amp lead from five yards away. Has staked the number one ranked Seminoles of Florida State to a 28 to seven lead over Brigham Young. And now the Cougars will start from their own eight-yard line. Right. Ty Detmer has a way of bringing ball clubs back. We've seen him do it before. But he, this is against a team that is really, really powerful. First down, Brigham Young. Detmer with time. Comes to the near side. It is caught. Scott Carlson, half back out of the backfield, is knocked out of bounds. Sunset over Southern California. Beautiful shots provided by the Columbia. Captain tonight by skipper Joel Chamberlain. And oh, what pictures they give us. Not a bad spot for a camera platform. Florida State is so powerful on offense, it almost overshadows the talent that they have on defense. Third and 15, third and 12, and they are able to pick it up. From out near the 18-yard line, first down, Brigham Young, Detmer looks to his right, throws. It is caught, or was it? No, it is incomplete. intended for Matt Zundell. Henry Ostazuki that time comes in, gets his hands up. One of the twins on this team tips the pass. Just a great out, great effort by Ostazuki. You know, the pronunciation guide is full of the BYU players. I, I walked around Dallas for a week looking at the pronunciation guide. Second down in 10 Cougars. Detmer, seven step drop throws end over end. It was tipped at the line of scrimmage by somebody in a Garnett and Gold jersey. One of the knocks on Ty Detmer has been his lack of size. Right there, it becomes obvious as to why you'd like to have a quarterback at six foot three inches tall, somewhere in that category. Then they can throw over those defensive linemen. Two batted passes in a row has had three deflections throughout the ball game. Good point, Greg. 421 to play here in the first half. Brigham Young faced with a third and ten situation. Double receivers to the top of your screen. Detmer throws again. It is caught over the middle by Max Suzuki, and he has a Cougar first down at the 39-yard line. For Detmer, a pickup of 22 yards before Leon Fowler says he's seen it up. Detmer back in the pocket. This is what he does so well. He waits, patient, sees his receiver coming across the middle. Matt Suzaki just holds on to the football. He's not going to outrun anybody once he gets there. He has to rely on precision. Get 
up the field, re recognize the zone coverage, get in there, kind of idle it down, and wait on the ball to get to you. From Brigham Young, their eighth first down of the ball game. From the 40-yard line, it is first and 10 Cougars. Short drop, now Dicker will have to go. He sends an outside arm, and it is caught. Eric Rage on his feet and spun down at the Florida State 37 by Buckley. A 22-yard completion a moment ago. He comes right back and pitches a 23-yarder to Drage. They wanted to throw the little three-yard flat pattern, but it was covered up well. Detmer had the presence of mind and the field generalship to know that, hey, I'm going to have Drage coming across the middle eventually. He's maybe my number three receiver, but he's going to be there. Lock running 331 to play here in the first half. Is Stewie Pelotu, not much. Boy, you talk about Ty Detmer and all he's accomplished. 42 NCAA records and counting in his last 24 games, excluding the Holiday Bowl last December. Detmer has thrown for 300 plus yards and at least one touchdown in his last 24 games. And that's why they have a chance in this game right now. Rage goes wide to the left. In the slot is Tui Pelotu. Crossing pattern. It is incomplete. Oh, could have been pass interference and not a flag slide. Eric Rage on that little crossing pattern was grabbed from the back. Corey Fuller, the guilty party. Three steps up the field and then back across the middle. Watch Drage as the contact happens before he gets to the football. Like knocked him off of his course. That should have been pass interference. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the Raycom Network. You're watching WCTV, Channel 6, Thomasville, Tallahassee. There's the situation, 2.51 to play here in the first half. Brigham Young trying desperately to get on the board. Detmer changing the play at the line and now realizing he's running out of time, wisely calls a timeout. He'll trot to the far sideline to talk things over with Lavelle Edwards. Frank, one thing, Brigham Young, they are coming off a pair of poundings. Their regular season finale last year against Hawaii, they were drilled 59-28. And then in the Holiday Bowl, Texas A&M smashed them 65-14 in a game in which that man right there, Ty Detmer, left with not one, but a pair of dislocated shoulders. There's the man. Outstanding player, a lot of character. Just a good person when you talk to him. Junior, host, Heisman Trophy winners that we'll look at here. Of course, you mentioned right Walker. There. In the middle of that list there, Archie Griffin, the only man to win it twice. And Detmer has a chance to do it, although few give him really much of a chance with the wealth of talent in college football here in 1991. Some are saying David Klingler. David Klingler's improved off of last season's performance. Better footwork understands the offense that much better. You realize that was Klingler's first season to play yeah. football for the Cougars last year. Yeah. First full season. Kind of sat behind Andre Ware, the Heisman Trophy winner, two years ago. Well, there's the man who is going to try and cart home another 25-pound piece of cast bronze. That are on third down and 10 now. From the 37 of Florida State. Looks right side. It is caught by Byron Rex, the tight end. He'll be far short of the first down, and I don't think the Cougars have any other decision but to go for it. When you're down 28 to 7, you've got to keep your defense on the sideline a little bit longer, give them a breather. You know that Florida State has the ability to go 90 yards, so field position really doesn't come into play. It's almost like this is going to be a shootout, and we got to hang with you. Graves goes wide left. Micah Matsuzaki is wide to the right on fourth down and seven. Going for Matsuzaki. He has got the first down and out of bounds. He goes. I tell you, he put a major league move on Errol McCorvey, the right corner. Denver buys enough time 
it was a blitz. Matt Suzaki knows he's not going to outrun anybody down the field. McCormie is already down the field. He comes back and makes the reception. Very aware of how much he needed to get the first down. Goes past that yard marker, and then comes back, holds on to the football, and just, hey, let's go back to the huddle and keep this drive going. Matt Suzaki this time split wide to the left, and the slot is straight. It is first down, Brigham Young. Wrong. So he yard touchdown run the second one of the night they cannot afford to have him hurt you guys went in to get spread that defense out misdirection plays earl kaufman he tacks on the point after and with 2 18 to play brigham young converts fourth and seven and comes right back on the 22 yard first by peter tui Polodu. and it's 28 to 14. Florida State is so spread out right now. There are only six defenders inside that box. Therefore, once Tupelodo breaks through there, it's just a matter of having good downfield running. He runs past the defender, keeps his legs up, sees the end zone, gets it just across for the touchdown. Watch how they come out with the offensive line and the left tackle. Everybody bunches it up into the inside. It's almost a replay of his first touchdown run that he had. Nine touchdowns a year ago. He has two already here in 1991. And just look at that upper body. He's only 5'11", but listen to this. He goes 215 pounds. Tui Pelotu caps the 92-yard drive. It only took him two minutes and 19 seconds. And as I said late in the first period, Brigham Young is a quick strike, lethal offensive machine. Their other scoring drive was 89 yards a way to slow down Florida State. This is going to be a shootout. And the only chance that Brigham Young has is a couple of turnovers or at least change of field possessions. Tiger McMillan, he's got it at the 15. Knights out across the 29 and is grabbed at the ankles at the 30-yard line by Brad Clark. What a great special teamer Brad Clark has been for Brigham Young. He was there special team player of the year in 1990. And there is Lavelle Edwards. Boy, I'll tell you, he remembers those last two games of 1990. And he certainly does not want to start the 91 campaign with a repeat. Lavelle Edwards, privileged to watch him coach a ball game. I've been in one where he coached against me and he whipped us. <laughs> reverse of the ball game that time he stays at home and makes a play that gives his teammates confidence second down and 15 field possession look where they're at right now the 25 yard line they haven't been down on this part of the field all night 134 to play clock running well the three-step drop he'll go to the sideline Terrell's got it out across the 33 near the 34 he took a shot from Scott Giles, the outside linebacker, simply spun off of it and picked up three more. This is why they tell you to wrap up. Don't hit with shoulder pads. Crutchfield just kind of hits him with his pads rather than putting his arms around him. Those four or five extra yards are the kind of things that, you know, that make the drives potentially third down and seven, third and eight right now. That's a lot different than third and 10 or 11. Casey Weldon, he has 
engineered a brilliant offensive display by the Seminoles thus far in this ball game. First time since 1987 that the Seminoles have had a returning starting quarterback. The last guy was, you remember Danny McManus, he led the Seminoles to an 11-1 mark, only lost a 26-25 setback at the hands of Miami and then with Nebraska in the Fiesta Bowl, 31-28. We've got the clock straight here in Anaheim. It is 126 to play in the first half. Or a mistake. A quartet of touchdowns. It is now third down and seven. Weldon, Green to the near side. It is Cox. Edgar Bennett pulled down from behind. They'll be way short of the first down. When he goes from his nose guard position. What's he doing way back there? Well, the last, speed. the last time that they ran the same play, third and 15 down there earlier, they hit Terrell with a big play. That Gomes was running into the backfield trying to hit Weldon. This time he realizes the same play's coming at them, a little delayed type screen, and he gets back into the pursuit. 6'2", 270 pound sophomore, Lenny Gomes playing a pretty good ball game. Did you say 6'2", 270? Yeah, that's one of those uh, fire hydrants with legs. Well, I'd say you put about five fire hydrants together, and that's what he is. You look down at Anaheim Stadium. I'll tell you, this is one beautiful evening here in Southern California. Temperature now must be right in the high 60s, low 70s, as Scott Player has trotted onto the field to punt it away for Florida State. You think he had to go warm up and stretch a little bit before this? I'll tell you, punters don't get a whole lot of action at Florida State. He's a fifth-year senior, a walk-on. In fact, he's the third walk-on in a row to handle punts at Florida State. Seminoles, incidentally, already with 300 yards of total offense. But Brigham Young has learned quite a bit in this first half and have somewhat settled in. Going into halftime, they just go 92 yards and score, make it 28-14, and then the defense goes back out there and holds them, a momentum builder. Micah Matsuzaki is back to receive this punt. Brigham Young with 10 men on the line of scrimmage. They're coming after it. Player gets it away, and that will back Matsuzaki up, and it continues to back him up at the 10-yard line. He's not going anywhere. Jerry Brooks tremendous downfield speed a 50 yard punt minus three yards on the return oh, what Brigham Young their two touchdown drives they have had to go a long way to get there 89 and 93 and there's the situation they've got a minute and four seconds this time to go 90 yards well they only did it it only took them a little over two minutes to do it the last time as they can get down to the 30 yard line they have a chance at a field goal at least there's the spread offense that is the trademark of Cougar football. First down, Detmer at the controls. Oh, is he dangerous. Looking right. Under throws the coverage. It is cut. Paul Moore, the fullback, who has come in to give Edgar Bennett a break. Correction, Peter Tui Pelotu. Again, they come near side. Scott Charlton had it and then lost it. When you go with the two-minute offense, players have to hurry back to their position. They get all set, and then they have to think about, okay, who's my foot to pick up? And the next thing you know, you're running out, you turn around in the hook, and you've forgotten about catching the football. You know, there's so many things that go through a guy's mind. That's why you have to work so hard on that during practice. The two-minute drill is a difficult thing to master. 42 seconds to play from the 15-yard line. Brigham Young. Cut from behind, and Detmer's going down for the first time in this ball game. That is Dan Footman. He is a big, speedy defensive lineman. 6'5", 272-pound junior out of Tampa, Florida. Detmer trying to buy as much time as he can, but there's nothing downfield for him to go to. He just He's lucky that the guy didn't try to swat the ball out of his hand. Matsuzaki comes out. It looks like, oh, that's one of those hamstring jobs there. When you pull up running like that, he's been their most productive guy so far in the first half in terms of catching the football. Bad news right there. They didn't really have anybody that they knew they could count on going into this game. 
Well, thus far, Matt Suzaki, four catches for 73 yards. And as you say, Craig, losing a wide receiver of his caliber would, uh, would be a huge blow to the offensive machine of Brigham Young. It is now fourth down and three. And to kick it away, Earl Kaufman. Terrell Buckley is standing at the Brigham Young 49-yard line awaiting this punt. Now, Kaufman would have been the Western Athletic Conference punting champion in 1990, but he missed qualifying by one punt. At this rate, he'll have plenty of opportunities this year. <laughs> Florida State, they're coming. And Kaufman gets it away. Buckley's got it at the 44. It comes near side, turns it up. Look out! Flag is down. A flag is down. Buckley will go, but I don't think it will count. There are three flags down. And a host of Seminoles are holding their helmets. 39-yard kick, a 56-yard return. I'll tell you, he had a pair of touchdown returns on punts a year they say that he's the neon Dion prime time Sanders number two that he talks a lot like him he had a little gape in his stride right there we have three clips <laughs> during the run back on the receiving team the enforcement spot will be the 50 yard line 15 yard family first round <laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> If you're on the BYU side, say, hey, back him up. That's 45 yards, the clipping that you just put on my guys. Let's watch them. There's one right there on number 34. You'll see another one. There it goes. He comes by you. And then as you get up into the field, you'll see one more coming up at the top left of your screen. Nonetheless, it is a pretty run. Buckley with a high stride. Watch him tight rope to sideline down here. Kaufman. He may have to join Matt Suzaki over there with a the pool of hamstring trying to chase Buckley down. There's your knee on Dion Strott. <laughs> Al Buckley a year ago went 63 yards against East Carolina for a score. Came back and went 67 yards against Georgia Southern. Oh, is he a game breaker? It is first down and 10 Florida State at their own 35-yard line. Just 10 seconds to play here in the first half. And coming to the near side, it is Sean Jackson. He is the backup to Ampley at the tailback spot. And Scott Giles will take him out of bounds out near the 42. And a Cougar is down. It is number 90, Lenny Gomes. And oh, has he played well from his nose guard spot. It appears to be a right leg or a right ankle. They've already lost Brad Hunter, number 98, a defensive end for them with a, with a knee injury. They don't know that it'll have to have surgery, but it is a, a cruciate injury at this point. That's the word we've gotten from down there. They lose Lenny Gomes. That's their nose guard. They don't have a lot of experience in depth. It doesn't look good when you start walking off like a two before. Maybe it was a cramp. Or maybe, maybe that's the way you heal things. You hold somebody by the seat of their britches and just kind of walk with them for a while. <laughs> now for Brigham Young, they lost their top four defensive linemen from a year ago. Part-timer Brad Hunter coming off ankle surgery uh, was the only guy with any real experience. And as Craig just mentioned, he went out a little while ago with a cruciate ligament injury. And now their starting nose guard is helped off the field. Wow, we've seen all kinds of healing methods these days. I've seen them slap them in the forehead and they fall over, but never hold their britches up. <laughs> Five seconds to play. The Seminoles come out of the eye. Again, it is Sean Jackson. And that is the final play here of the first half in this second annual Disneyland Big Skin Classic. Halftime, it is Florida State, 28. The Cougars of Brigham Young, 14. 